Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. We have news of the Vatican taking a concrete step in the direction of establishing the Pacamama Rite of Mass, while providing itself plausible deniability at the same time. It's a story that hasn't at the time of this recording gotten any traction whatsoever. So let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about some good news. A bishop stood up for sacred tradition and the traditional liturgy in ways that are better than anything we've seen so far from any of the bishops since Traditionis Custodis came out on the 16th of July. And he practically calls out Francis in so doing. So let's start with some good news first. Our story takes us to the Diocese of Lake Charles, where Bishop Provost decided that his job as bishop required him to stay focused on the needs of the faithful under his care, rather than playing the silly games of the modernists. Bishop Provost issued a decree this weekend about Traditionis Custodis, and had a letter that went with it explaining his reasoning. Truly, we need more bishops like this, and Traditionis Custodis has helped separate the wheat from the liturgical and theological chaff. Keep this bishop in your prayers, and let me know if he is your bishop in the comments, please. Let's just do a quick survey of his decree. The critical statement he makes is in the accompanying letter, which I have for you. But the decree has a couple of important features. First, he invokes Canon 87 of the Code of Canon Law, which bishops can use to exempt their dioceses and individual parishes from specific papal decrees, meaning that he is invoking canon law to prevent Traditionis Custodis from functionally going into effect. Instead, he designates those parishes as, quote, exempt locations where the faithful adherents of these groups may gather for the Eucharistic celebration according to the Massale Romanum of 1962, following their current respective schedules, etc. End quote. Bishop Provost issues some requirements for their priests who want to say the Mass according to the 1962 Missale Romanum. They must ask him in writing, and their fitness for being granted permission would be based entirely on their having competency in the Latin language, knowing how to say the traditional liturgy because the traditional Latin Mass is not merely only in Latin, it is actually in form extremely different than the Novus Ordo. And they also must have uh, canon no canonical impediment from saying the traditional liturgy, meaning they must be a priest in good standing. None of that is a problem at all. This decree is possibly the best we've seen so far out of any bishop, hence why I wanted to share this with you today. But it gets better. Bishop Provost issued an accompanying letter to explain his reasoning, just like Francis did. His accompanying letter with the decree. Get ready for this. This is fantastic. Dated the 1st of November, 2021, for the Solemnity of All Saints. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, In these troubled times of recovery from two severe hurricanes, a three-day ice storm in January, and a natural disaster of flooding in May, all in the space of nine months, I am writing to address the implementation of Traditionis Custodis. Thousands in our diocese remain displaced, living in temporary housing. The federal government has not been forthcoming with assistance, as in the past, to further compound our difficulties, we are dealing with the present situation and its consequences. Given these burdens and the emphasis on mercy exhibited by our Holy Father, I am prompted to address this implementation, where appropriate, in a spirit of epicaea and with the application of Canon 87. I am issuing this decree for the implementation of Traditionis Custodis in compliance with its prescriptions. As a pastor and a bishop, I am aware of the needs of the flock and address them. We do, do so liturgically for numerous groups that require special attention, such as our university students, the Hispanic community, and the hearing impaired. Our pastoral concern extends as well to those who worship in the Usus Antiquor, that is, with the Roman Missal of 1962, and who have done so since the establishment of the diocese. I am unaware of anyone in this community who has expressed opposition to the Second Vatican Council, much less denied its legitimacy. As well, those who have chosen to discuss with me their devotion to the Usus Antiquor have insisted upon the validity of the Reformed Liturgy. With this in mind, I would be grossly negligent, if not callous, to implement any restrictive law while at the same time ignoring these realities. In my many years of having the privilege of celebrating the sacraments in the Diocese of Lake Charles, I have been continually struck by the tender devotion of the faithful. I am also aware, as well as can be, of the needs of the people as they have expressed them to me. Whether at masses in newer or older rites, I know the people with their concerns. There are those with situations that complicate their material lives that make all of these pale by comparison. 
There are many burdened by financial difficulties, unemployment, and estrangement in their nuptial union. They have lost loved ones to the present situation, and they do not understand it. They strive amidst great trials to protect and provide for their spouses and children. They suffer quietly, not advertising their problems, seeking solace in the rites of the church, whether in the vernacular or in Latin. If we as pastors do not acknowledge these realities, and instead continue to engage in arguments that the faithful find incomprehensible, then we truly risk becoming a resounding gong and clashing cymbal. See 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1, and just as irrelevant. In offering this preface to my decree, I ask your prayers for the church. As she journeys cautiously over these troubled waters, pray that God will guide her as he promised, and that the gates of hell shall not prevail. See Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. As I remain with prayers for you and your families, be assured of my blessings for all in need. Sincerely yours in Christ, Glenn John Provost, Bishop of Lake Charles. To be clear, here are the implications of his decree. Gloria TV sums this up nicely. Headline. No rigidity, no legalism. Lake Charles Bishop implements Traditionis Custodis. That is a great headline for this. My hat is off to whoever wrote it. Well done. From the article, quote, There's no pro prohibition in either particular law or universal law against the celebration of any sacrament in the Roman Rite in any parish, chapel, or oratory of his diocese. Lake Charles Bishop Glenn Provost, Louisiana, writes in a decree. In his diocese, every priest can use the Roman Rite if he knows how to celebrate it and has a basic knowledge of Latin. Existing Roman mass groups may continue as before and are dispensed from Traditionis Custodis's rule that parish churches must be avoided. In an accompanying letter, Provost explains that he is unaware of anyone in the Roman Rite communities expressing opposition to Vatican II, much less denying its legitimacy. Therefore, he writes that he would be grossly negligent, if not callous, to implement any restrictive law. The bishop is aware of the needs of the people. Such people seek solace in the rights of the church. Provost acknowledges these realities and doesn't want to engage in arguments that the faithful find incomprehensible, thus making himself irrelevant as a bishop, end quote. And if you think he was calling out Francis there, the bishops who've waged war on the traditions of the church, and the rest who have chosen to rather obviously ignore these hard times in the lives of the faithful, well, you'd probably be right. He's clearly calling people out here, and more power to him for it. It really does seem that the bulk of the bishops have chosen to ignore concrete realities in the lives of everyday Catholics, or worse, have aided Caesar in his demands that the laity pinch incense to him in exchange for their God-given rights and duties being recognized, and their lives permitted to be lived as had once been a normal everyday affair. It's all rather bizarre in our times, but it shouldn't be that surprising, given that so many of the bishops have grown fat off of Caesar's dirty silver, that anything that reeks of rejecting the program that brought this alliance between the modernist and Caesar into being has to be rejected. And so many of the bishops reject the traditional movement within the church. It's all really very sad. If you need a concrete example of this, out of the Vatican we get some news that should have made headlines but didn't. I'm only reporting it to you now because Professor Peter Kwasniewski reported it on his personal Facebook page. In the Vatican, they've decided to end the issuing of liturgical books in Latin. Now, that may not sound like a big deal to you, but this directly paves the way for the Pacamama rite. Now, they're not totally ending this practice, mind you. But it's actually worse than if they had totally ended it. They've ended the issuing of the central reference edition of liturgical books in Latin. That's the book that translations of the liturgy are based off of, so that you can have liturgical coherence. I'll let Professor K explain it here. Quote, A new Vatican decree has dropped postquam sumus pontifex, changing canon law in regard to liturgical translations. The document is fairly long and has a lot of standard stuff in it, but there are a few revolutionary moves, as one would expect. 1. Number 54 says, Having obtained recognitio by decree of the Congregation for Divine Worship and the discipline of the sacraments, the text of the proper, in Latin or in another language, are to be considered typical. Their translations into other languages are to be presented by the competent authority, accompanied by a brief report, to the same congregation for confirmation. This means for the first time in the Latin Church since arguably the 4th century, the normative edition, editio typica, of a liturgical book can be in a language other than Latin. Why is this significant? Well, not many can speak or write Latin anymore, but the existence of a Latin editio typica meant a single stable reference point for all translations. 
It was a symbolic and practical means for maintaining some kind of coherence. Not much, admittedly, but the umbilical cord was always present. 2. In keeping with this shift away from Latin, the decree says that the more radical adaptations, enculturations, think Amazon right, will be possible, including new texts drawn up solely in the vernacular and subject only to the approval of the Episcopal conferences. There's more that could be said, but my takeaway is this. The process of denaturing and destabilizing the worship of the Latin Rite Church was just given an additional boost. The new decree follows on the pseudo-history and pseudo-theology of Traditionis Custodis, with its voluntaristic attribution of authority to the supposedly authentic Roman Lex Orandi of the Novus Ordo of quote-unquote Saints Paul VI and John Paul II, end quote. Not only is this the prime example of the bishops wasting their time in amidst some particularly dark days in the lives of the laity, they're literally causing the destruction of the liturgy via the spread of bad translations with no central reference point anymore. If this isn't stopped and reversed soon, we'll have chaos liturgically all across the Roman Rite, far worse than we already have. Consider the implications of this. The local bishops, those liberation theology Pac-Man mama worshipping bishops in the Amazon, will now be able to officially develop sanctioned liturgies for all manner of novelties and apostasy, and the world may barely even notice, let alone be able to voice outrage. Plus, Rome will have plausible deniability over all of it, since now the local ordinaries are the ones who will be solely responsible for this mess. This is the furthering of the modernist goal of turning the Catholic Church into Henry VIII's church, which in the modern world is so fractured that if you didn't know any better, you'd have no idea that they were unified under a single ecclesial communion banner. You'd think they were different Protestant groups entirely, but no, they're unified under some mythical idea of communion that is coming to the Catholic Church soon if something does not change. This will help establish the Pac-Man Rama Mama right of Mass more than anything else. The ball is now fully in the court of the various bishops' conferences in the Amazon region. Will they move forward with this? I'm betting that yes, they will. That they will continue to ally themselves with the world in this way and will institute an illicit and probably invalid right of Mass that will functionally deny Christ and enthrone the Pac-Man Mama there. That's my expectation on this because I've seen nothing related to pac Mama to make me think otherwise thus far. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments, please, and like and subscribe if you haven't, it really does help. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.